Let's add a speaker to your DIY synth. The DCC can produce lineable audio, and I typically just connect it to an audio interface and hear the sound in a DAW. But what's cool about embedded platforms is that we can create self-contained projects. This means that we can power a DIY synth with a battery like we did in the previous video, and play the audio out of a speaker with no laptop in sight. So in today's video, let's learn how to play an audio out of a speaker like this. Here are three speakers from Adafruit that should work great for creating portable synthesizers. As always, components list is in the description. We're going to focus on this speaker today, mainly because it comes with wires already attached, which will help us get started quickly. So we could just connect the speaker's power wire to the C's audio outpin and join the grounds together, right? Not quite. We would need to amplify the audio signal before we can play it out of the speaker nice and loud. Luckily, Adafruit has an audio amp board that allows us to add speaker to a project with ease. This is a breakout board for the PAM8302, and it can deliver up to 2.5 watts into a 4 ohm speaker like the one shown earlier. Because the amp is Class D, it is super efficient, so it's perfect for a portable battery power synth like the one we started putting together in the previous tutorial. Another reason why this board is great for getting started is that it comes with a terminal block and JSD connector already pre-soldered. So, no need to solder for this tutorial. You're welcome. The goal for today is to connect the components together and see how this type of speaker sounds with Daisy. Alright, let's get started. We'll get started by just having the Daisy seat on the breadboard. We'll add the amp and speaker to the battery synth from the previous tutorial later in the video. Let's first grab the JSD 3-pin cable and insert the JSD end into the amp's JSD connector. We can only insert it in one direction, so the white wire is going to be the audio input called signal, red wire is VIN, and black wire is ground. Now we can connect the DAISY's audio outpin to the amp's signal input and DAISY's analog 3.3 volts to the VIN. By the way, the range of the amp's VIN pin is from 3 volts to 5 volts. Then join the grounds together. Next, let's connect the speaker's red power wire to the positive terminal of the amp's terminal block. To insert the wire, loosen this M2 screw using a flathead screwdriver. Then tighten it to secure the wire. You'll need a fairly small flathead screwdriver for this. The 1.8mm size flathead from this set is confirmed to work. And let's connect the analog ground to the negative terminal. Also, connect digital ground and analog ground, which seems to get rid of a noise that's present when they're not connected. Cool, that's it! I'm gonna turn down the potentiometer on the amp a little bit, just in case it gets really loud. By the way, I flashed a simple 440Hz Tautus oscillator patch. Let's power the daisy and see how this sounds. Success! Yeah, that was much louder than I expected. Let's try different sounds. Also play the same sound but directly record it through an audio interface for comparison. Just a heads up, I'm not recording in a super treated studio or anything like that, so this is just to give you an idea of what the speakers sound like. Also have these speakers, so let's listen to them back to back. Yeah, they all sound great! I personally think the choice comes down to your project needs. For example, this speaker is pretty large, so it may be too big for somebody's portable synth project. I would recommend getting this one for getting started since it's easy to set up. And this speaker also comes with holes that you can put screws through, which makes it easy to install on a project. One limitation I did come across with this particular setup is that you'll hear a noise when playing a pure sine tone. 
But chances are, most sounds will have enough harmonics to mask the noise as we heard in the various demos. I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Also, you won't hear any significant noise when the amplitude is zero. So you don't have to worry when no note is being played, for example. Okay, let's bring back the battery circuit from the previous tutorial and put together a foundation for a portable synthesizer. Let's drive the amp with the 5 volts from the PowerBoost 1000C. Now that we know how to put together battery power synth with speakers, we can start building synthesizers that can be played on the go. I'm planning on making multiple videos on building portable synths, so stay tuned. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.